Hey everyone, so One Piece Chapter 1017 just came out, and we got one major, major event and one major, major reveal. So, let's start with the big event, which was Tama giving the order, right? The order to basically everybody who's eaten those dangos were gifters to switch sides over to the Straw Hat Alliance. So, this has obviously created a huge, huge ripple effect, and however it goes from here on, it does look like the Straw Hats have essentially, or the Alliance's side, Gotta refer to them as the entire alliance, they're not in this alone. So the alliance aside has, it looks like for the moment, basically even the odds and turned it into a fair fight. So we saw in various rooms, right, Jack and Inorashi, particularly who's who in Jinbei, that the alliance aside was outnumbered in the first place, right? So the one-on-one -on -one matchups that they'd been set up with weren't really technically one-on-one -on -one matchups. So I think especially with who's who, I remember when who's who was lined up with Jinbei, several chapters back, right? We got that panel of Jin of uh, Who's Who in Big Cat form, just chilling, and all of these other weird furry cat costume people just surrounding Jinbei, and it did not look like a fair setup for Jinbei, right? So I was wondering how that was gonna be resolved, if Jinbei was just gonna take care of all of those other guys, the others, the henchmen, the red shirts essentially really quickly, and then move on to who's who because it clearly was not a one-on-one -on -one setup but i'm glad that oda basically set it up in a way that that is addressed that it's not just who's who plus all these other guys don't matter those guys did matter because a big deal has been made out of how dangerous the gifters are you know in large numbers an individual gifter is no problem to somebody like jinbei of course but i like that oda addressed that yeah jinbei was having trouble because he was surrounded in a room of enemies, and on top of that, he had to fight who's who before he could switch it over to a one-on-one -on -one fight. So that made sense. Uh, Jack, obviously within Urashi, I don't remember Jack having a bunch of henchmen, but obviously a bunch of backup came, or maybe I'm forgetting, I guess he did have a bunch of henchmen and I forgot about it. But I like that the playing fields have been even and it kind of explains away why the Straw Hats in any sort of individual matchup 1v1 why they would not be just outnumbered by the fact that you know other henchmen are going to arrive and make it not just a 1v1 so i like that i do think that uh it would have been nice if maybe last chapter or something like that we first got to see you know someone like jinbei struggling with the fact we could have checked in on them and seen that oh they're struggling because that there's a lot of numbers that they're up against same with inorashi or something like that and then this chapter kind of switched that with basically tama resolving that problem rather than the moment that we see that Tama is going to give the order, that's the moment that we're told, hey, there was this problem going on that you guys didn't know about, but it's okay now because Tama just gave the order. You know what I mean? Like, so having seen Jinbei struggling like maybe a chapter ago or two chapters ago with a lot of the numbers, and then this chapter, having Tama give the order to check that off and turning it into a fair fight, I think I would like, maybe that would have been uh, a little better for me, I suppose, but it is what it is. We've basically resolved the problem of too many numbers against the Straw Hat Alliance, at least for the moment, it looks like, right? Other things that we found out about Luffy is, <laughs> you know, we saw Luffy being rescued, or we saw the, the coming rescue for Luffy a couple chapters ago, um, but this chapter we did get to confirm that Luffy is safe, sound, on board, they're just pumping water out of him, nothing new there, we've seen this before in Arlong Park and all sorts of other places. I wonder how many times in the series we've seen somebody like, making Luffy like spout water out of his mouth because he's been underwater for too long and he's a devil fruit user who <laughs> needs this specific pumping water out of him treatment, right? So, uh, Luffy should be back. I don't know what the ETA on that is. It really should not be too difficult of a, of a trek back for him because he's got a lot of ways he could make it there. He's got that very useful Gomu Gomu fruit, which we've just realized is a big deal in this world. So, you know, he could stretch up there, maybe. I don't know if he extends all the way to Onigashima. If he really wants to, he could gear forth up there, chill for maybe five minutes, let his hockey get back up, and then go after Kaido. I don't know, but as soon as Luffy's back, conscious and everything like that, we should expect him to be heading right back over to Onigashima. So, fingers crossed for that happening soon. Besides that, right, the little skirmishes that we got. So, well, let's start with Sanji. Not much more to say here other than, okay, it seems confirmed, confirmed that Sanji versus Queen is happening. We were not all crazy when we believed towards the start of the arc that Sanji was going to fight Queen. I don't know, like, we've seen, we've all seen One Piece, we've all read One Piece for so long, like, we kind of just understand that certain things are going to happen, right? Sanji is going to fight K uh, Queen, 
I almost said king, because I'm about to get to the Zoro part next, right? So we all knew that Sanji was gonna fight Queen, but then over time it was like, well, what if Sanji isn't strong enough or something, or what if Queen goes to uh, some other kid? Like, what if Queen goes to Kid? What if Queen goes to Law? I, I don't know, I saw a lot of random things going around or whatever. But no, I mean, we're at the, it's the fight happening, Sanji's gonna fight Queen like we all expected, so. Queen's hybrid form, hybrid cyborg form, Queen's a ugly dude. That's all I gotta say in his hybrid form, it's just a, it's just a weird, ugly looking monstrosity. Uh, it should be a good fight. It should be a really good fight because Sanji, I've talked about it in past videos in my One Piece fights analysis, how Sanji, we get really good fights out of him when Sanji has to use his brains to combat the opponent as well as his brawn, right? So it's like a little bit of cunning is usually involved in Sanji fights. I think Queen, because he's got, you know, robotic weaponry, uh, as well as chemical weapon remakes for the perfect opponent for that and queen has a bit of a history with him right not him specifically but his father so hopefully we get a little bit more out of that and what now that i'm thinking about it what about germa i need to try to remember this that we still don't know what happened at the end of whole cake island i think we've all just kind of just accepted this as a loose end this needs to come back into play what happened to germa and how is jinbei back just perfectly fine after such a big deal was made out of the ending of whole cake island and how all of their fates were you know, uh, basically hanging in, hanging by a thread or in in, in some sort of completely uh, unpredictable state, right? So I think that <laughs> there is a big explanation that we are waiting on. I hope that we get it soon. I mean, we are talking about Vince Smoke Judge and the Germa here again. Jinbei is here. Big Mom is here. Like all of the, like there's, someone should address what happened back in Whole Cake Island at some point soon. I'm hoping, I think it will happen. Besides that, Sanji fine, Zoro looks like he will be fine, because, and I totally, totally forgot about this, the, the Minx, it was commented on way back in Zo, right? I think I wouldn't even remember this if I hadn't saw, seen someone spreading around on Twitter recently, which was the Minx back in Zo had some sort of a fast way of healing, and that was commented on, but it was mentioned in a very, uh, very uh, low-key manner right so it was not really a, a big panel like oh the minx heal really fast how they heal so fast i think it was an offhand comment that um i think actually zoro might have been one of the ones that to have meant to have uh, brought that up so it was a very offhand comment in a panel but um it, it like it, it was planted a while back that there is something that the minx have up their sleeve besides the full moon uh, they do have like another another little card up their sleeve that allowed them to recover much faster than would have been expected. So that's what's going to be used to help cure Zoro. I don't know if it's a cure. I, I'm. I guess we'll find out in a little bit whether or not it's essentially a cure. It will get him back into fighting shape, right? So my understanding is it's either a cure, but he'll just feel twice the pain later on, but it will cure his bones, or it's going to temporarily fix his bones, but then break them twice as bad. So you understand there's a difference between like, will his bones still be broken at the end of this? You know what I'm saying? So is it gonna, is it actually fixing his bones and he's just gonna feel pain that's twice as bad after all of this? Or is it gonna temporarily get him up to fight, but then his bones are gonna be twice as broken <laughs> after this? So. There's a difference between feeling the pain versus actually having your bones be twice as broken as before. So, I'm gonna assume it's the pain one, that's what it sounded like to me. Let's hope that's the case for Zoro. I mean, if he broke every bone in his body, that he's just gonna have that be doubled down on going forward. I think he's gonna have to put his dream of World's Strongest Swordsman on hold for like a year or something like that. So, let's hope that that is not the case, right? Let's hope that that is not the case. Um, yeah, besides that, I think the Zoro stuff checked off, Sanji stuff checked off, Chopper has a side effect, right? So he goes chibi mode. Reminds me very much of, you know, Luffy's previous side effects to Gear 3rd. Actually, it's just, it's pretty much exactly the same thing. You can get, uh, you know, uh, gigantic for a little bit, and then the side effect is that, you know, Luffy is put into a chibi form, Chopper is put into a chibi form. Don't know if Oda was thinking about it like that, but it's pretty much exactly the same thing. Uh, will help sell more merch, I'm sure. I would like to see Chopper still get a fight, so hopefully this is not a long-term situation. So let's see how that goes. 
And then besides that, right? Besides that, we've got Jinbei versus Who's Who. I really like the fight setup that we've got because, you know, Rokushiki, it felt like it was going to be a big deal going forward for like a little while during the CP9 arc. And then I like how Oda has used Rokushiki since then, which is that it's a technique. I mean, the techniques of Rokushiki are kind of woven into, mixed into a lot of characters' fighting styles, usually from the world government. So it is a world government sort of trained thing. So I mean, we see vice admirals like Mamanga. I believe Mamanga used Rokushiki at one point. Maybe it was Mamanga, maybe it was Dalmatian. I think Dalmatian, for example, has used Rokushiki. Um, there are, you know, there, there are mixes. Virgo, obviously. There are instances of a lot of uh, high-ranking government members using Rokushiki, right? So I like the fact that Rokushiki is a mainstay in the series, and it's just kind of mixed into a lot of characters' fighting styles. That feels, I don't know, it just makes the world feel a little more real. I don't know, I, that's a generic thing to say, but it does feel make the world feel a little more real like there is a special type of martial art and some people have picked up on aspects of it clearly it's part of some government trainings and everything like that but not all government agents take the time to learn all of the intricacies of rokushiki but they have picked up some some aspects of it right so getting back to that who's who this is the first full-on rokushiki user i think that we've seen yeah since cp9 and it's uh interesting to see how he uses it i think i especially liked the uh fang um, version of the Rankyaku, um, unless it was, I gotta check again, maybe it was Shigan, but I'm pretty sure it's the Fang version of Rankyaku, and we have not seen that before <laughs> at all. I also did like during the CP9 arc, all of the CP9 agents had their own little twists on how they use their Rokushiki uh, abilities. So I would like to see a lot, like I'd like to hope that Who's Who can use a lot of what they did, uh, for example, moving with Iron Body, like uh, Jabura was the only one who was able to do that out of CP9. I wouldn't be surprised if Who's Who can do that as well. So I think just getting to see Rokushiki again is going to be a, it's going to make for an interesting fight, particularly because I think that Jinbei, in my opinion, has an extremely boring fighting style. I think, in my opinion, far and away the most boring fighting style out of any Straw Hat. It does seem to be mostly slow punches with shockwaves. I think basically that he's not exactly a fast character. I think it's mostly slow paced punches that have shockwaves. I think he did a kick against Watatsumi, but it's mostly gonna be punches, I'm pretty sure. He's not gonna be flying around the screen that much, you know, so. In my opinion, Jinbei is by far the most boring, one of the most boring fighting styles of a strong character in the entire series, in my opinion. By the way, I can no longer dislike Jinbei that much because I learned recently that, you know, how Oda says that all characters have different, all the Strats, you know, if I had to give them a real world nationality, you know, Luffy, I think is, uh, I think Luffy's Brazil, Zoro's Japan, um, things like that. So I learned recently, apparently Jinbei is India, which means I have to like him now, which is just disappointing, but it's what we've got. So yeah, I'm a Jinbei fan at this point, so it's unfortunate that one of my favorite characters fighting style is so bad. But luckily he's got a matchup with Who's Who, right? And Who's Who uses Rokushiki. So I think at least, you know, if you've got a boring martial artist, match him up with a really cool fast martial artist with a wide variety of techniques. Um, one dimensional character fighting style versus six dimensional character fighting style. At least it makes for some, you know, uh, yeah, at least it'll make for a good martial arts matchup, right? So I think that was one of the few ways Oda could have given Jinbei an entertaining fight happy to see that. The interesting part of the who's who situation is, of course, the history that the Goma Goma no Mi is eaten, an important devil fruit, right? An important devil fruit to the world government. Why? We don't know. I will... <laughs> we don't know. I mean, I will say that... Uh, okay, let, let's, let's just talk about who's who himself really briefly, I guess, before we get into the Goma Goma no Mi, but who's who... Uh, I, th I like that there's an interesting little bit of history associated with him, which was that he was a shining star of the CP9 at one point, 12 years ago, he lost his job, not just lost his job, he didn't just lose his job, he was sent to jail for losing this Goma Goma no Mi, because that's how important the Goma Goma no Mi was. So keep in mind, Rob Lucci, who, uh, who's who was compared to, right, Rob Lucci is thriving and well and promoted to CP0 at this point, despite having, you know, 
uh, <laughs> allowed all of Ennis Lobby to be raided by a small group of pirates, lost Nico Robin, and basically was partially responsible for the entire judicial island of the world government being buster called to hell, right? That entire island was destroyed on Rob Lucci's watch. But none of that compares, he got a promotion, right? So he's in CP0 now. So none of that compares to losing this Goma Goma no Mi. So keep that in mind, all right? Maybe Yoda wasn't thinking exactly about the consistency of, of that. Obviously, Lucci took some time off from CP9, probably was not, uh, probably was hunted a little bit, I suppose, but he's worked his way back up to CP0. So maybe, you know, maybe Lucci did some stuff that we're not aware of that got him back in the world government's good graces, whereas who's who did not. Um, it is interesting to me that they were rivals at one point. Um, to, to be clear, that's not to say that who that Rob Lucci back then would be comparable to who's who now. Obviously not. That dude lost to like pre time skip Luffy. But it does make sense if you think about like, well, if they both continued getting stronger, well, Rob Lucci right now, who's a CP0 member, I wouldn't be surprised if like who's who is like close to him or something like that. You know, who's who is a top member of Kaido's squad. Not quite a calamity, but but probably just under the cusp. And Lucci's a member of CP0 at this point, so God knows how strong Lucci is at this point. I, I mean, if any of those, uh, sorry, anime-only things of uh, <laughs> Lucci versus Sabo or anything to go by, then we know that Lucci has gotten really, really strong. So the idea that they're probably similar in strength at one point in time and probably maybe still are similar in strength, that would be interesting to think about. But all of that aside, the Goma Goma no Mi. I got nothing for you. I, I don't want to talk about it too much here because I guess I could, uh, like, I can think on it. Um look at it several different ways and maybe there's a good theory to come out of it, but I don't want to like force speculate some stuff that when I, I really don't have an idea of why the Goma Goma no Mi would be important other than it belonging to an important pirate in the past. Um, the one thing I will say is that uh, there is an interesting little direction that it does feel that things are sort of shaping into recently, which is, you know, sort of the reveals that there is a that Luffy may be the next Joy Boy, something along those lines. Not in a reincarnation sense, hopefully, but the idea that there, the world is waiting for a sort of chosen one, uh, that there is a sort of title of Joy Boy, that Luffy might be the one to fulfill certain, you know, certain things that people are waiting for. So already it's starting to shape into Luffy being a, a sort of important figure in a certain way. I don't want to say yet in a predestined way because we don't have enough information and I like to think that's not the case, but it is sort of shaping into Luffy starting to fit more of the traditional chosen one hero uh, type or mold or, or possibly fitting into that, right? This idea that the Goma Goma no Mi is a very special devil fruit sort of adds into that conversation, right? In that not only is there a special role that Luffy may be about to fill, but may have been destined to fill, to fill, may have been destined to fill, but he also has potentially a very special and very important ability that, you know, was more than we thought all along. So I don't, again, this is one piece Oda loves unpredictability. So I'm not gonna think any of this at this moment. I'm just gonna assume that no, Luffy's not some special destined child of, prophecy that was always born to save the world or anything like that, etc, etc. But I will say that the addition of the Goma Goma no being, me being special, um, that's not, until we learn exactly why it's special, because it may be special in a way that we're not thinking of or anything like that, maybe it is just because it belonged to a certain someone in the past, not the fruit itself has special properties. Um, but still, my, my preference was generally always that the Goma Goma no Mi was simply a very normal Arguably a very very average fruit that was only really good because of Luffy's creativity rather than it having been an important fruit all along. So That is my hope I'm gonna continue hoping that that is the case and that this is just an interesting new development that it is special for some reason But not necessarily a reason that makes Luffy inherently special for having eaten it if that does that make sense Does that follow? So That's all for this video. If you enjoyed then definitely like comment and subscribe the raid will fail and I will talk to you all next week.